Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, Learn GCP with Mahesh. From today onwards, I'm planning to start a new series of video where I demonstrate how a person having AWS skill set can learn GCP. The video series is named GCP for AWS users. I'll continue posting my regular videos on GCP concept, but this is an additional video series. The first video in this series is provisioning a virtual machine. Let's assume we want to provision a virtual machine in Mumbai region. In AWS console, make sure the region is set to Mumbai. And in GCP console, there's no action required for setting this because this action will be done at a specific virtual machine level. To provision a EC2 instance, click on EC2 in your AWS management console. And in GCP's web console, click on the hamburger menu, scroll down to compute, and you'll see compute engine click on that now coming back to aws console click on launch instance the similar equivalent button in gcp console is create click on create and since we are using free tier in both the web console i'll be preferably using free tier only and in aws console we will choose a ubuntu instance click select and in GCP, what we can do is we can select that machine tie boot disk by clicking on change. Select the operating system as Ubuntu select. So that's the step, first step. The second thing is in AWS, we are choosing T2 micro, which is one vCPU, one memory. The equivalent, that, equivalent of that in GCP is, you need to click on customize in the machine type and make sure the memory is set to one. Switch back to basic machine type, a basic uh, view, and you should be getting that same stuff. The next step is click on configure instance details. Now here you can provision multiple virtual machines that we'll discuss in another video series in GCP. But for now, just leave it as one. The next option in AWS uh, console is request for spot instances. If you select this, this will create you spot instances. The equivalent of that in AWS in GCP is preemptible VMs. For that, click on the management and you should see an option for preemptible VMs. So which is a short lead virtual machine, click on on. So this is the equivalent, but for our demo purpose, we may not be using a preemptible uh, VM or spot instances, but so you can uncheck it. So just wanted to show you the option. Let's proceed further. The next one is the network to which VPC network the virtual virtual machine is connected to. So in AWS, it is a there's a default VPC. Similarly, in GCP also, there is a default VPC. To get access to that VPC, click on networking and you should see that default VPC enabled. So that's the option. Now, next one is whether you want to assign an external IP address to this EC2 instance or not. The equivalent of that is available here. Click on that pen icon and you should see under external IP address, it is ephemeral. If you want a static IP address, you can assign that, which is equivalent to your elastic IP address in AWS. So let's leave it as ephemeral. And here we are enabling it. So that's the equivalent. But if you don't want to create an external IP address, click on none. The equivalent of that is disable. So let's enable it back. The next option under AWS console is IAM role. So you can assign a specific role so that whenever the EC2 logs in, so with that role details, it will be able to perform the necessary action, maybe to get access to an RDS instance or to get access to Redshift. So that's where you can configure this IAM role. The equivalent of that in GCP is called as service account, which you can get the details of that under service account by default there's a role already created it is called as 
compute engine default service account so whatever you want to give you can give to this access to this service account so that's the equivalent let's move on the next option is shutdown behavior either it stop or terminate there's no equivalent of that in gcp console The next option under AWS console is enable termination protection. This is to avoid any accidental deletion of your EC2 instance. You can enable this. The equivalent of that in GCP is under management, you see delete protection. Just enable this. This will avoid any accidental deletion. So that's the option. Moving on to the next option in AWS console. This is under monitoring. So enable CloudWatch detailed monitoring. This is if you enable this the logging will be enabled and it will incur additional charges the equivalent of that is available under GCP under access scope if you set on this set access scope it will show you the various options there one of the options is stack driver logging which is by default turned on for you the next option under AWS is Tenancy whether it's a multi tenancy or a single tenancy option, which will explore the same thing in GCP in a, another video series moving on to the advanced details If you click on this you have an option of user data So this is where you can key in any startup scripts like this when the EC2 instance is provisioned We want to update the operating system and install Apache 2 Web server that is the option and if you want to do the same thing in GCP you can what you can do is you can go to management under management you have startup script option paste your code here next let's click on add storage in aws console which shows the option of increasing your uh, storage the persistent disk for your boot disk which shows it is 8 gb of hard disk and it is a general purpose ssd and the option for this is already enabled in GCP. The moment you select a boot disk, the size of your boot disk is preset there. Minimum is 10 GB for any uh, Linux distribution. And if it's a Windows distribution, it's 50 GB. So that's set by default and you cannot make it less than 10. That's the default one. And there are other few options where you see delete the boot disk when the virtual machine is deleted. That is the option here. The equivalent of that is available in gcp under disks where you see this this is checked by default so once the virtual machine is deleted be it in aws or in gcp the boot disk can also be deleted that is the option the next option which you see here is the boot disk is not encrypted by default but in gcp it is by default encrypted and it is using google manage key option so that's the option so encryption is an added advantage here now apart from boot disk if you want to add any, any additional data disk there's an option click on add volume so it's basically ebs elastic block storage and what should be the volume you want to give let's make it as 20 in this case and you have the option of encrypting this if you want you can encrypt it and you can also turn this delete on termination. This is the option in AWS. The similar thing is available in GCP under click disk or add new disk. So you can give a name data disk. And if you want SSD, you can select SSD persistent disk. And let's give the size as 20 because in aws we have given the same thing and this is the option which is equivalent to delete on termination if you want to delete on termination select this option so that it will delete when the instance is deleted so good let's move on to the next option click on add tags so add tags the equivalent of that we can add a tag here so this is usually for searching purpose on for searching all the billing information related to a specific tag so you can make it as environment this is a dev environment that's what you can add equivalent of that is available under management so let me first 
click done here yeah now let's click on the management under management you will have an option called as labels let me click on management the equivalent of tax in aws is labels so you can click on label here environment dev and if you want to add one more thing uh, whether it's having a, a back end or a front end you can also add that by maybe adding a, a like application app it's a web web server because we are installing Ta apache web server similarly here also you can add app web server good now let's click on config configure security group the next option is configure security group this is equivalent to firewall rules in your gcp by default port 22 the ssh port is turned on this is you can control this at a virtual machine level and in gcp you don't have a screen in the compute engine but you can do that setting in firewall rules but there are a couple of options where you can turn on specific firewall rule one for port 80 and one for port 443 https let's do that here in aws let's because we have already installed uh, our startup script has a web server which listens on port 80 let's add a firewall rule port http port 80 and let's allow everybody to connect to that the similar equivalent of that in gcp is just this checkbox if you enable that you are all set so i guess we have done almost everything let's click on review and launch the equivalent of that here is create when you click create it gets created let's click on launch here and if you have an existing key you can use or you if you want to generate a new key you can create a new key here demo download the pair and i'm good to click on launch instances so the instance on both the sides are getting provisioned once the instance gets provisioned i'll show you the screen how it looks ec2 instance and GC instance both are successfully provisioned. Since we had installed Apache Web Server, what we'll do is copy the external IP address and open the IP address of the EC2 machine to check whether the Apache 2 is Apache Web Server is running or not. Similarly, in GCP, just click on this external IP address. It should open up your web server. So that was the first video on how AWS users can learn GCP. Hope the video was helpful. Thanks for watching.